Hey everyone, it's Amy Lynn Durham and you're listening to Create Magic at Work. Create Magic at Work is on a mission to equip senior leaders with tools they need to be a true servant leader and actually understand what that means. Improve employee engagement, retain top talent, and transform your workplace culture to have less stress and drama. So let's start making magic. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Create Magic at Work. Today, I'm really excited because I have an interesting guest to share with all of you. Her name is Jen Spiegel. She's the founder of Becoming Iconic. She's a seven-figure global business and leadership brand that elevates entrepreneurs who desire to create a seven-figure legacy through integral leadership. So we're going to get into that a little bit in the episode. Jen is also the host of the Becoming Iconic podcast. Becoming Iconic is all about the real, the raw, and the vulnerable truth about being a female entrepreneur while weaving in the practicality on what it takes to design a life and business you love. Becoming Iconic is the invitation to step into the new paradigm of leadership and empower women who are ready to revolutionize the way they show up in their lives and businesses forever while welcoming in pleasure, joy, and abundance. So I'm super excited to talk to Jen today because this is what struck me when I wanted her to be on the show for everyone. Even if you're a leader in the workplace, this isn't for entrepreneurs, is we're going to talk about this new paradigm of leadership and revolutionizing the way that we show up in our lives and in our businesses, whether we have our own business or we work for someone else. So Jen, welcome to Create Magic at Work. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Amy, and appreciate everybody who's listening in right now. Just want to honor all those heartbeats that are are here with us. Thank you. Do you want to add anything to what I shared about what you do and give the listeners just a little bit more of a background about you? Yeah, sure. And I think it's important for this particular community as well, because I was in corporate. So I'm not mm-hmm. this born and raised entrepreneur. I consider myself actually a professional pivoter. I just seem to be that person that in her life makes big shifts and pivots. I've never really been afraid of that. So I grew up actually in corporate America. I had an incredible career in marketing, global marketing and event planning, worked with high tech companies. And it was when I had my first child that I decided to stay home and leave that career because I traveled so much. So I went from corporate executive, beautiful job. I loved my job to stay at home mom, mom of four turned entrepreneur, and now multiple entrepreneur, podcaster, all the things. And so I feel really excited to talk to everybody today because I feel like I've lived in all of the worlds. And hopefully that means we can have a really great conversation about leadership on multiple levels. Yeah, thank you. So tell us what you mean when you talk about this new paradigm of leadership. Yeah, I feel really called into speaking about this openly with as many people as possible because I feel like leadership, I feel like the idea of owning and being radically responsible in leadership has had this attachment to the hustle culture. So a lot of people, when they hear the word leadership, they think of doing, actioning, managing, you know, holding the fort. And I don't believe that that's what leadership means anymore. I actually believe leadership starts at home, meaning with ourselves. How are we personally leading ourselves? Because who we are in private is who we are in our relationships, both at home and in work and outside of the workforce. And so I believe now we're moving into this beautiful new form of leadership that welcomes in rest and play and pleasure alongside of success and doing and productivity. And I believe it's the balance and harmony that we've all been seeking for so long. So I love everything you're saying. And I actually left my corporate executive job in May of 2019 to go off on my own and try to become iconic (laughs) with (laughs) Create Magic at Work. And little did I know there was going to be a lockdown and a pandemic and I would have to do a lot of pivots as well. But you're just really resonating with the rest and the play And those themes, I come from the world where if you worked all night and, you know, finished a project, that was a badge of honor. If you didn't get any sleep the night before or, 
you know, I think one of my old <laughs> leaders, I won't name them, but they used to say, if you're going to hoot with the owls, you have to be able to crow with the roosters. Mm. You know, if you're going to stay up and that was the theme. And I love that you're talking about this new, really leadership energy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, and I want you to kind of comment on this. Where did it come from? Where did that realization come from with you that rest and play, from what I'm hearing you say, leads to innovation and inspiration? Yeah. Well, it came from constant burnout and overwhelm and not feeling alone in that. Everybody I would speak to, how are you busy? How's life busy? And I just got really curious around this. Like, why is this our go-to answer? And the friendships and relationships I had, and I, I had a beautiful circle of high achievers, but we were all sharing one piece that was common, and that was that feeling of overwhelm and burnout, this constant hustle. There was no room for rest. Who has time for rest? We'll rest when we get to what? The income level, the title, whatever that was that we were seeking. And I thought there's got to be a different way. Because if we're all going towards, let's call it legacy, and this is a new concept for me that I'm actually kind of dissecting currently, so I hope I articulate it well. But if we're mm -hmm. all looking for this end point in our journey, what we can do is sometimes fixate so much on that that we don't enjoy the process. We're not enjoying today. We're not learning the lessons. We're not celebrating our successes, no matter how small and minute. It's just never good enough until we hit this spot. And I believe that's what creates burnout. I believe it's the lack of being in the moment of constantly feeling like when we attain this goal, then I'm going to feel. But what if we invited that feeling in today? What if we thought, okay, when I reach a CEO position or when I hit seven figures, then I will feel like I have room for more vacation, that I can rest, that I can look after my body and my health, that then my family will be cared for. And ultimately, we're all looking for this feeling of peace and joy and fulfillment. And so I started to get curious and play around with that idea of inviting it in today. What if it never got better than this? I would say to myself, what if this is the summit? And I'm multiple six figures, which most people are so excited and, and anticipating in their own lives. And what if I sunk into this with so much desire and fulfillment in this very moment? What would that invite? And then invited those feelings that I felt were an arm length away. And that's when I thought, oh, I, I'm on to something. I'm on to actually living my life and curating this beautiful memory and memories in the meantime. And it's in the meantime where that is where all this special advice, wisdom, experience, and the journey unfolds. And we give so much emphasis to this end goal. I mean, even if you think about the word legacy, you know, I want to build this legacy or I'm building this for my family. So when I go, they have, well, then we're gone and we can't even enjoy that with them because we're not a part of that. What if legacy was how we led today and how we felt today and the way we greeted people today and the way we cared for ourselves today? And that was, in fact, what it was meant to be all along. I love that. It's embodying the energy of, I'll just, I'll say abundance for me I'm, mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And I love how you say, what if nothing changed today? Are you okay with that? And really tapping into enjoying the journey because when the journey is over, we're done. So what is this rate, this imaginary race that we're, or this finish line that we're running towards? And you really hit something that resonated with me and I'm sure my listeners as well. And it's this, it's almost this feeling of guilt, especially when you leave the corporate space that you almost have to unthread mm -hmm. and unwind when you don't have anything on your calendar. Or when, you know, when you were saying the answers are, I'm busy, I'm busy. We're almost, pro we are programmed to be busy. And to me, the space I came from feel guilty if you're not. Right. And I've noticed even in the past couple of years, if someone asks me, you know, on a Monday or a Tuesday, you know, what are you doing today? I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't have a boss and I started my own company, I'm working, I'm busy, I'm busy. And it was like this, this programming, I had to really get a hold of my calendar and own it. 
and own it in a way that I was removing things from it Mm -hmm. rather than filling it up. And then understanding that this is what you said, again, just a little bit in a different way, the complexity of thought and perspective taking in spiritual intelligence, the polarity, the doing and the being balancing those. Because if you're overdoing, like you just said, it leads to burnout. And in the being, guess what? You've discovered it. That's why you're so successful now. That's quantum leadership. That is tapping into innovation and inspiration because you gave yourself time to do that. So I love how we're tying into all of these things. I want to know what your thoughts are because you talk a lot about doing inner work and how it starts with you. We sort of tapped into living in pleasure and enjoy today. And what does that feel like? And how can I embody that energy today? And what if today was enough? How does that work? No pun intended when you have to do inner work. <laughs> so what is your take on that? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. And, and something that is not going to be very sexy or pleasurable. And that's by doing a lot of healing. So in leadership, and leadership can be one person. It could be leading your home. It could be leading a team, whatever that form looks like for you. When we are leading our lives and we have stifled anger, resentment, overwhelm, sadness, we all have micro and macro traumas. And when we haven't dealt with that, which we've never been taught, so we just have to own that piece. We've not been taught to really look at those things and stare them down and kind of pick them apart to take that lesson and know that it's chiseling us into this great leader. But when we don't do that, what happens without us even realizing is we're projecting and almost like spilling those emotions out and upon people. So in leadership, it's such a sacred position. I mean, imagine you're leading somebody or multiple people. What a beautiful honor and privilege So isn't it our responsibility to make sure that we are honoring ourselves and honoring those beautiful people by kind of cleaning up our backyard? I look at it like weeding the garden. You know, when you weed the garden, it creates space for new growth. It creates space for seeing something you didn't see before. And that's through healing. And it doesn't feel good. This is not, someone would not define it as pleasure, This is hard work, if we can use that word. This is going deep. But the reward, what's on the other side of that, is so fulfilling. And it creates a compassionate leader. It creates somebody who can lead without being triggered constantly or make it about themselves or needing that outward validation. They have this beautiful, what I describe as peaceful confidence. I think of it as someone walking in the room And they don't need to declare they're there. They don't even need all of the attention. But you know that you just gravitate towards that person because you can feel them. You can feel that they are comfortable in their skin. They're confident. They're poised. And to me, that is like the ultimate. That's the type of leader I desire to be. And I know that that's the leader I am also attracted to. So healing is one of these things that we neglect, but is probably one of the biggest antidotes to incredible incredible leadership. Hey, Magic Makers, Amy here. Listen, I wanted to say to all of you, don't get hung up on the word spiritual. Spiritual intelligence is a faith neutral practice and it can be accessed by almost anyone. Your spiritual intelligence experience will be unique to you. And often it starts with making wise and compassionate decisions for yourself and also working on boundaries and protecting your energy. Let me help guide you to lose the stress and overwhelm and feel that deeper sense of meaning in your life. Spiritually intelligent people practice making wise and compassionate decisions, even under great stress, and maintain inner and outer peace while doing so. You can't fake spiritual intelligence, but with some inner work, you'll be able to feel and exude this energy, and everybody around you will notice and want to follow suit. Think about what your ripple effect is in this world and how you want to leave it. If you're interested in going on this transformational journey, reach out to me, email amy at createmagicatwork.net or go to createmagicatwork.net forward slash work with me, sending magic to everyone. Yeah, the reference that you have said of 
that feeling when you're around someone that is emanating that energy. Often with clients, we'll start with creating an awareness between your ego versus your higher self. And your higher self is that place within you that you can access that comes from wisdom, compassion, and love. And if you can understand the difference between your ego and and your higher self and who's in the driver's seat at what time, and if you can start practicing seeking guidance from your higher self and operating from your higher self in more spaces, you become the leader that you're talking about. And the cool thing about that is there's actual data to support it. So you're leading from this higher level space, wisdom, compassion, love, the decisions I make ripple out into the world. The best part about it is it improves productivity and profitability. It's there. And then the other thing is because you're in a position of power, whatever energy space you have, that's going to multiply it by 10 to your team because you're in that power position. So I love everything you're saying for Create Magic at Work and the Magic listeners. This is exactly what we're talking about. This is what we're trying to get to. This is the new leadership paradigm. It's not, let me call a consultant into my company because my employees need to be fixed. It's not me, it's the staff. No, this is taking a look in the mirror and doing some inner work to understand how you can operate from a higher level. And oh, by the way, it's going to ripple out to the people that are surrounding you, and it's going to increase your productivity and profitability. It's going to make your employees stay longer. They're going to be close work relationships, boost employee satisfaction by 50%, just to you know throw one of those out there. So what would you say to somebody listening that thinks that none of this is needed in business. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for working on operating from my higher self. I need to hit my sales goals. I need to answer to my shareholders. I can't deal with this woo-woo stuff right now. Maybe if we have time later. (laughs) What would you say? (laughs) I would say, oh, I know how that feels. And I lived that life. I went to the top of my entrepreneurial career, which is very, very much the same as climbing the corporate ladder with that exact mentality. Who has time to read books? Who has time for this personal growth? Woo woo. I'm here to sell and grow and build. And that I did. So it's not that it doesn't work. I think we need to be clear on that. I think there's um, a bit of a, a tone going on as though this is the better way. It's just a different way. And I actually love marrying the two, but I did that with my first big business. And here's what I would say to somebody like that. I would say it is far more uncomfortable to learn these things when you have multiple people looking at you as their leader, big organization. So let's assume you've climbed to an upper management role, an executive role, and now all of a sudden you start to see your gaps and your blind spots. You start to realize, I don't think I even know how to hold all this success and all these people. There's a lot coming at me because you haven't done the work and because I hadn't done the work. It is a more uncomfortable feeling to deal with it at that point than it is to do it along the way. So that's one of those things, if I could go back and give somebody my hindsight, it would be that. Even if you feel like you don't have time, carve out. I remember starting with 10 pages a day because I still had the narrative like, who has time for all this reading? I don't. What are they doing? I have four kids, multiple businesses. I don't have time for this. And I thought, what could I do? And I could commit because I was a doer. I could commit to 10 pages a day and I started there. And 10 pages a day turned out to be a book a month. And all of a sudden, I started to hear wisdom and words and thoughts and processes that I hadn't embodied or even been challenged with before. And all of a sudden, everything started to expand. And I remember having this moment going, oh my goodness, people were telling me to do this this whole time. Yes, I created big success, but if I had only been able to marry it with these beautiful mythologies and and ways of being, and what would my life have looked like? Because when I didn't do those things, 
and I, I'm very honest, so I have no problem giving my some of the dirt on me. I was the mom who would greet my kids as though they were an inconvenience after school because I hadn't finished my work. So they would greet their mom with me shushing them because I was still on the phone or with my head buried in my phone answering text messages. And I didn't know how to create those two worlds together. I felt as though I was constantly in this battle of choice. I've got to choose to be an exceptional mom and wife, or I have to choose to be exceptional in my career. I didn't see how those two things could fit. And it was understanding that rest and growth and learning about myself and healing myself and creating space for that thing that would allow me to bring those two worlds together. And I can honestly say with all sincerity, I do have the best of both worlds. They do not conflict. They do not contrast. There's no tug of war. I I have eliminated guilt from my body when it's like I'm working or I should be with my kids or when I'm with my kids, I should be working. I don't live by that anymore. And it's because I've created space and it's because I, I embraced personal growth and development. So the person who's asking that question, I would challenge you to think, is it going to actually be easier when you have all that success? Or could you carve little spaces into your day now just to start with baby steps of welcoming more of this in and being curious around it? Mm, Yeah, I love that. Would you be able to share maybe one thing that you did to let go of some of that guilt where you felt torn before? Mm -hmm. I know you said healing and personal growth, but a little bit more specific. Yeah. I love teaching on energetics and masculine and feminine energetics. I think it's important. I'm sure your listeners know this, but just to make sure we, we start the conversation with realizing this is not gender specific. We both have masculine and feminine, but I was raised in a very masculine hustle culture in business. And that was that do, 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 and who had time to be because things had to be done. And the more you worked, the more you got ahead. And so I look back at that with compassion. And I look back at that with forgiveness, because there were things that I, I'm i not necessarily proud of, like greeting my children that way. But how I learned to have that was inviting in the feminine. And that was very, very uncomfortable for me. Very uncomfortable. Because I just believed that the successful person was the one that put more hours in, that honed their skills, that did more, that was willing to, you know, stay up when others wanted to sleep. And I I lived that narrative so fully. But when I started inviting feminine more into my life, I was very uncomfortable. I didn't know what that meant. Sitting back and resting was never something I practiced. I didn't even know what rest was. So I started with wine and chips and dip. (laughs) So it started to take the form of when the kids went to bed, I thought, okay, I'll have a glass of wine, chips and dip, and Netflix. And, you know, after so many days of chips and dip and wine, you start to actually look like chips and dip and wine. But I also (laughs) realized I wasn't rested. (laughs) I wasn't rested. I was waking up the next day foggy, inflamed, not feeling well. And that was what sparked for me the realization I had no idea what rest, peace, joy, fulfillment meant for me other than work. And that's not a very comfortable place. I felt some shame in that and some guilt in that. Like, how could I not know what rest is for me? So I started to get playful, almost childlike, and just try things. So I would go out in nature. And force myself. So I'm not saying this was natural and I'm not saying I looked forward to this. I forced myself to do things like that and get away from the loop that I had been participating in for so long. And I'd force myself into walks. I'd force myself into a meditation. None of it was natural at first, but eventually I found my sweet spot. Eventually I realized, oh, when I get up, an hour before everybody else and light a candle and sip my coffee and like taste it and not get on my phone, but sit in quiet and stillness and hear and feel the support and love of divinity and guidance and myself and like hear the whispers in my mind. I was so heightened. My entire day looked differently. My day chased me. I was ahead of it versus me chasing my day. So those are just some of the things I would highly recommend. I love that. The not overthinking it and forcing yourself to do it. 
I've, I've heard a speaker one time talk about how it takes some people, you know, 30 minutes to get ready to go on a walk. They got to get their special outfit on, the tennis shoes, yeah. their pack, their yeah. water bottle. <laughs> and she's like, just, just go on a walk. Just walk out your front door and walk already. And sometimes it's just not overthinking it and just start moving and doing it. And I'm sort of trying to save this till the end, but when you're talking about drinking your coffee in the morning uninterrupted and how your day started chasing you instead of you chasing your day, spiritually, what it feels like to me is you are letting go of control of how you want things to be and you're opening up a little bit of space for maybe what the universe has planned for you and what that could bring in. And that is divine feminine energy. Can I receive? What can I receive today rather than going after something and putting yourself in that beautiful receiving space, I think is, is very powerful. And that energy is part of this new paradigm of leadership that you talk about. It's that leadership shift that we're feeling is more of the divine feminine energy moving into these workspaces. Mm. And it's amazing to see what can come of it. Because when you tell somebody that doesn't understand, if you don't do something, something bigger could come your way. It's like, how do I, I can't even wrap my brain around that. (laughs) But it's like, well, just try it. Like you just said, just get up and just start doing some of those things. So I want to ask you one more question before we pull a special card for you. I ask every guest what servant leadership means to them. And so I'm really curious to hear, based on all of your past experiences, where you are today, what does servant leadership mean to you? Oh, and I love that term, and I use that term, and it it's very deep and meaningful to me. I'm stepping into emotion because it just, I feel servant leadership more than I can articulate servant leadership. It's a feeling. It's a feeling when you are one, and it's also a feeling when you're around one. And the way I would express it is high compassion. Somebody that when you're with them, it feels like the world stops. They actually pay attention to you. You feel seen, you feel heard, you feel understood. There's no pedestal. There is no hierarchy. Instead, it's like this most beautiful leadership of someone guiding someone and and giving them references. But there's something about a leader who can step aside and let another leader flourish and applaud that and celebrate it. It's to me, if we can say it, the removal of ego and the stepping into that soul-led leadership, the one that knows we are all so special and we all have a lesson to offer and a story to offer. And I believe when we step away from this ego of feeling, I I believe our culture, our world is addicted to bigness right now, addicted to income, addicted to title, addicted to achievement. And what if we were so solid in knowing that all of those things are our God-given right, abundance is our birthright, And instead cared so much about how we treated people and the care and love and generosity with people. How would our world change? How would our culture that we're creating change? It would be so divine and so beautiful. But it's the removal of needing to be important, the removal of needing to be seen yourself, and instead allowing that person you're with to take up the space, hold that space for them. To me, that's servant leadership. I love it. Thank you for that. That's a very unique answer compared to some of the other guests. And you're hitting right on a skill. Just the whole episode, you've been really energetically hitting on what is our breadth of time perception. We talked about enjoying the journey and not striving for the finish line. What is our personal breadth of time perception? You're talking about servant leadership. How can I be a compassionate leader? You also talked about how you were successful in a business without tapping into some of these skills, but wish you had these skills. And what did that feel like? So to me, you know, that's 
Can we live in this paradox that your life is extremely profound and important and also a tiny piece of the history of the universe? And can you make leadership decisions from that space Mm. and understand it's not just about the title and how much money you make, but it's about a different legacy that you're leaving behind, not just money and title, but what are we doing for humanity, for the planet, for our communities, not just our employees, our customers, and our shareholders. Yeah. So thank you for offering that perspective on compassion. Mm. I really appreciate that. I'm going to pull a card for you Okay. from my journal prompt card deck. Every episode, the listeners and my guests get a message from the universe specifically meant for them. And I am shuffling the deck. There's a card that's popping out that wants to come see us. Oh my gosh, this is cool. So we got power. Ooh. I think it's like right in line with what we've been Mm -hmm. discussing today. There's an illustration of an owl on the card. The affirmation is, this is so in line with what we've been talking about, power. The affirmation is, I make wise decisions, keeping the big picture in mind. Question for you, Jen. There's two questions. Do you want the first one or the second one? Ooh. Well, let's go with one. Let's start with number one. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to let you decide through like your intuition. Okay. What areas have you been avoiding through indecision? So that's an easy answer, but not an easy answer. And so I know for me, and I believe we share this, and so I think this is a great conversation, is the, the distraction I am easily distracted and wooed by illusion and the bigness of some people, the feeling like I'm behind, did I miss the mark, this feeling that maybe I'm too late. And so distraction can very easily pull me right out of the feeling of power, personal power, alignment, making great decisions for myself because I start second guessing things and questioning things. I'm, I'm slipping out of that piece. So that would be distraction would be the answer for sure. And the comparison in that distraction. Mm, I love that. Distraction is big because it keeps us from it's like unconscious, but it's conscious at the same time. It's like a weird polarity, right? And it keeps us from, at times, from making decisions for our life that we need to make and taking responsibility for our own lives, which is a, we really need to do that. So thank you for sharing that. Jen, thank you so much for being on Create Magic at Work. If anybody wants to become iconic, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, come on over. So I have a top rated life and business podcast called Becoming Iconic, the masterclass. And the reason it's called the masterclass is I go pretty deep on subjects like this. So it's on every platform that podcast is my pride and joy. So I'd love people to come over and subscribe and hang out there. I also love to share wisdom and expertise over on Instagram, Becoming Iconic. I am spreading myself along all social media platforms, but I recently just had my Facebook and Instagram hacked and disabled. So I'm spending a lot of time over there just rebuilding. And it's actually been a beautiful place for people to watch me actually model what I teach. I feel like becoming iconic is becoming iconic through this experience. So that's a really beautiful place to play with me. Yeah. And of course, the website, if they want to read blogs or have any interest in going deep with myself, the becomingiconic.co. So becomingiconic.co. And there's lots of information and and tools over there. Amazing. Jen, thank you for sending magic to everyone today and continue your journey on becoming iconic. I mean, I'm just really grateful for the conversation. So thank you for the magic today. Me too. Thanks for having me, Amy. Hey everyone, it's Amy here. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of Create Magic. Please come back often and subscribe, rate, and with the podcast. Keep joining us for more exciting episodes where we help you transform workplace culture to systems that create less trauma and stress and have high productivity and profitability. You can get your own tools for the workplace at createmagicatwork.net. I have a new Create Magic at Work, the journal that just released, and it invites about different themes for work in your career. 
Each section of the journal contains a topic, an affirmation, and two prompt questions to help you journal your thoughts. Topics are inspiring others, mentorship, expansion, and productivity. So connect with me at createmagicatwork.net. Also with me on LinkedIn and Durham. Sending magic to everyone and see you next time.